Willkommen, bienvenue, and welcome back to R on Friday with Light. It's not really Tidy Tuesday, it's kind of Tidy Tuesday, but I'm not doing visualization this time. Let's get pretzel going. And it feels like my voice is echoing in here again, despite it being back to its non echoey state. I wonder if it's because the door is open. Okay, it is set to YouTube safe. Go with surprise me. It's a good one. Okay, so what we're doing today is playing around with actual words and whatnot. Suppose I should ping the discords. Okay. So, last time, we did a few things, poked around a bit, got some interesting whatnots. And so, this is the code that we used for getting nice, clean descriptions. All of this, move it on into here. So I had built a thing that uses concept net number batch over in Python and used it for one of the classes that I took. And so here's some of that Python code. It's not necessarily the best. And so I tried to translate and slightly improve it when moving it into R because there are a few R style things that make it run better than the Python version. But it's still a little slow when you're looking through all, you know, half a million words. But that's okay. We're not going for super efficient here. We're just poking around a bit. So that loads some files and a few helper functions such that we can run something like this runs super darn quick, and it gets you the embedding of any given word. But it isn't just words. It can grab full phrases and whatnot. And so if instead of just Twitch, we wanted to use, uh, let's load the Springer library. A stringer. Uh, excuse me? There is... There is no way there's no stringer. 
Oh, I... I had to upgrade my R version, so nothing is installed anymore. So we're gonna have to ins reinstall everything that we need. Which hopefully won't be too much. Hey. So if we rerun all the stuff, now it's beautiful. And so we could do string split of some sentence. So then we would have um, the streamer streamed a stream on Twitch. And then, okay, so it's string split like that, and then we're splitting it on spaces. And there we go. Hey there, Mac. And then we unlist it because I don't like lists. And then we chuck that into the number batch fit. Still super quick and gets us a matrix of values for where each word is located. And so this matrix is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven by 300. And so if we did dim of word sub embeddings, we see it is in fact seven by 300. And then if we were to say, take word number two, which is a fantastically um, ambiguous word and look for the five most similar words, it should re return streamer as the number one, given that is the one that it was. But then the most similar are streaming tape drive, streamers, party poppers, because of that sense of the word streamer, but then pencil. That's a word I am not familiar with. And so we look it up. Pencil plastics. Um. A little banner, flag, or streamer. Which one would expect, given that it was given to us when looking up the word streamer. And so that is basically the fundamental problem with any sort of embedding system. Anything that treats a word as an immutable one thing in space is gonna be wrong. Because there are a lot of words that are just not. They are not monolithic things with relation to everything else. And so we need to know that going in, that it will work for certain monolithic words, but for words that are non-monolithic, it's gonna struggle. And so this sort of stream, I'm, I'm not sure whether this is the right source of stream or right sense of stream. And then if we do number five, this one's gonna be rivers. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it's the verb. It's hard to know. And so this is the trouble you'll run into whenever working with any sort of 
number battery. But hopefully there will be enough monolithic words in, uh, excuse me, are apparently decided to cease to be. What a jerk. Um, okay, so let's clean out our environment. Let's reload all the stuff. It's gonna be a real short stream if it crashes whenever I try to read a uh, data file. Or we might just switch over to a game. I I have those, quite a few. We just have to decide what I want to play if all of the data just doesn't work. Because we could go back to Minecraft, do some more automation there. We could install something new. We could play more Vampire Survivors. We could play more Skull. I never did uh, go back and check the levels on this to see how the music uh, balances with my voice because it looks visually good, but I haven't done enough with the level meters to have a visceral sense of the difference between minus nine and minus 28. Okay, so everything is reloaded. Now, let's read in those data files. Okay. That is much better. Yeah, little O is always better than a little loud. Um, okay. So this is the thing that we did for cleaning We, I thought Stringer Place All was part of Stringer. Did I not, did I not load Stringer? I, oh, I didn't, I didn't actually load it because I didn't load this function to make it all quiet. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay. So the question becomes if we try to fit fit the vector to this, will it work properly? One quick way to find out. Let's go! Maybe because it was in a loop, it didn't actually display it properly. Nice. Because here are the embeddings. And there are all the words. In pandemic, several virulent diseases. Hey there, Aiden. How's it going? So we've got ourselves a bunch of lovely words. We've got a bunch of lovely embeddings. 
Um... And so... Game number batch is that. Uh, the first time you send a message, it prioritizes showing me the message over loading your icon. And so in the time between your first and second message, it loads your icon and shows it. Okay, so next up we want to... Once again, we want to... Actually, this time we want to apply to game.nb. We want the embeddings along margin 2. Because we want to do this column-wise. We want to apply mean. We want the average location of the embedding, such that we get an average score for where this game is located. So it'll fit each of the words to their respective vector, take the average of it, and return that as the vector for the game, and it failed! Oh no! Non numeric, huh? I mean, they look like numbers. So... Dimension, 250 by 300. So let's apply... And get the dimension of that. Oh, did nothing. Is it zero one then? No, I didn't think so. Okay, so this is three hundred. So that's good. It's supposed to be three hundred. But why there are Nas, that's a whole other thing. So it might be that it, when trying to do the fit, came across something that it didn't like. Is there is not in... Okay. So let's do a sum of is na. Nope. None are na. Baglage, what are we doing? We are trying to turn words into numbers. And someone has already done that for us, but now we're trying to take phrases and condense them into a single number. And for some reason, it is not giving us numbers.
And yet here we are. The sum is fine. Check the mean. It's just being done. Um, I'm just poking around at doing it because I want to be able to do it. And I had done it before in Python and I wanted to be able to do it in R. And there's always weird things when transferring from language from one language to another. Like, why doesn't this work? And there are a lot of different ways of doing NLP. And I am a fan of the quality of the embeddings from Concept Net Number Batch. There are some fundamental issues, which I addressed a little bit earlier about how it has to treat each word as a monolithic thought and how almost every word in this sentence is not monolithic. Um, you still might be able to do decent NLP so long as you're not rolling your own. Where you have to train your own off of the billions of things. But yeah, this, this sentence, each of these words doesn't mean what I want it to mean. And so we will have that problem that we're pushing to the side for the moment. Um... But for now, I just want to get the average embedding for each game, and I'm not certain why it won't apply it to this matrix properly. Because doing it with a loop is slower than doing it with apply, but apply isn't doing what it's supposed to. Uh, I think I might have it. Yeah, for the really good ones, the models are too big. And they just keep making them bigger. Like, there are labs out there that their only goal is to make a bigger model. And so, however long it takes them to run it is how long it takes to uh, to get the next one. There we go. Um, so what we're doing right now is actually going the other, we're going the other way for the moment. Right now, what we have is information on board games. And so what we get from the board game is a description. Yeah, random data from the internet, which brings all of its uh, biases from 14-year-old kids on the internet. Um, so what we have is information on board games. And so right now, game.nb is talking about pandemic. So in pandemic, several virulent diseases have broken out simultaneously. And so what this is going to do, it's going to take the uh, embedding of each of these words in the 300 dimensional space. And then first, what we're going to do is just take those embeddings and averaging it. To get the average embedding of the game. It is not a good way to go, go about it, but it is a good first way to go about it. And so that's what we're getting here. 
is the average embedding of this game to plonk this game somewhere in a 300 dimensional space. Okay, so now what I'm concerned about is whether or not the embedding is of length one. It is not, because why would it be? So we're gonna normalize it. Uh, sum of game bed square. And then we're gonna do what you were thinking of where you give it numbers and it gives you a word back. And so then what we're gonna do is nb dot nearest word of game dot embed. And we're just gonna grab the first one. So we don't need to need that parameter at all. We're just gonna run, grab the nearest word. We wait for about eight seconds because it's running through half a million options and seeing which one has the closest embedding to this game. Which, this is why you don't take just the average. Yep. And so, concept net number batch is similar in its idea from word to vec which takes a given word and the context around it. And then you remove the word and see whether or not you can predict the word from the context or the context from the word in the most linear way you can. And so you get tons and tons and tons of examples. And then they went through several different iterations of how one even trains something like that because you could use a neural network and they get really complicated really fast. And the number of words is way too big. And so instead of comparing the given word versus all the words that could exist, you just have the word versus a few random words that shouldn't have anything to do with it. And you want those random words to not do a good job. And the word that you have to do a good job. And so you balance a couple of distractors versus the word that you have. And that's a lot easier to train than trying to figure it out for all of them. And then you work through that, do a bunch of linear algebra, and eventually you get embeddings for each word into this 300 dimensional space. So you try to capture the context as well as you can. And a few of the interesting things that came out of that was that you could do basic arithmetic on certain concepts. And let me see if that still works in, in number batch. Um, can I access it directly? Good. Okay. So I can grab the embedding of any given word. And then I'm going to subtract man from king. And then I'm going to add woman. And then I'm going to look that one up. Oh, it took you right back to King. So in the original um, word to vec, one of their prized examples was that if you took King, subtracted man, added woman, the closest word was queen. But here, it doesn't work. Um, Let 
let's see if we can... Oops. Because it might be that it's not normalized, it might have some minor issues with something else, so we're gonna um, check on the math for that. Sum of Q squared. Okay, so it's at one and a half, so let's... Let's normalize that. And then see whether it still gives us king. It does. Um, but that was one of their crowning glories in Word to Vec was having that arithmetic where you could subtract concepts and end up somewhere meaningful. Uh, we seem to have lost that on this. Um, at least for this. Can the reverse process turn queen into king? Let's give it a shot. I'm also not entirely certain these were the two words that they used. Um, yeah, but it, it didn't take it very far. Um. And again, we should probably normalize it first. Oops. Um, but there was a lot of work done in Concept Net Number Batch to try to curb some of the injustices that were typically present in the random internet scrape that went into the original word to vec and so this might be part of that consequence that you can't just do these anymore because these two are now more similar to one another than different yeah so the data set is board games what we're gonna do is we're gonna load in, we're gonna average, and then the nearest word for to pandemic, unfortunately, was, uh, oh, right. We need to normalize it properly. Was the. Let's try it again with it properly normalized. And so again, the most similar word is the. And in NLP, that's a fairly common problem, is that everything gets overpowered by words that don't mean anything. And so one of the common ways of sidestepping that is to add a bunch of stop words saying, I don't want to look at the most common words. I don't care about the, I don't care about a. Uh. Just take all of those and just throw them in the garbage. And so in languages that don't have useless filler words like we do, it does become a little less of an issue. but they come with their own set of problems.
Finnish doesn't have many of those words at all. Okay. But even if you get rid of articles, you still end up having incredibly common helper words like and. And so you're trading one super powerful useless word for a different super powerful useless word. Um, yeah. But yeah, we don't have the cases that you get in mainland Europe where you have to transform one word into 16 different forms depending on how you're using it. So let's think about how we want to deal with this. We could just drop the stop words. We could prevent reduplication within a single um, in within a single entry where we take um, where we take this list of words yeah let's swap this back to our style and so let's get rid of the reduplication Such that even if we do have the, the, we only have one the. And so now we have a, oh no. There we go, there we go. It depends on what you want the final product to be able to do whether or not you include stop words. Because if you need it to write prose, yes, it needs stop words. If you need it to understand what a game is about, eh, maybe it doesn't. If you wanted to seriously understand with one of those billion parameter models, then yeah, you should probably leave the stop words in because the difference between a prince and the prince is kind of important. And now the nearest word becomes, give it another eight seconds. Excuse me? Where then? That was unexpected. Okay, so let's take a quick look at what columns we've got. Okay, so I believe primary is the one we're looking for. So we're gonna print. And so one of the typical ways to do it if you're not going to use stop words is, oh, right, that's not how this works. We're going to paste. You know what? Let's, let's just print one and then print the other. No sense doing crazy combining nonsense. Wait, what? Oh, right. <laughs> Which one? Because I want to see whether or not all of the games give you such garbage results, or if it's just Pandemic. Um, so yeah, the most common way of going about it is to do a term frequency, inverse document frequency thing, where 
the more common a word is in the thing you're looking at, the more you want to include it. But the more common it is among all of the rest of them, the less you want to include it. And so you'd have very common things like the in every document, and so they would get very little weight. But then within a document, you'd have a couple of things that are speaking towards what it's about. Man, this is certainly not doing anything useful. They're all getting fairly similar results. And they're all pretty useless. So it makes me think that maybe, just maybe, we should use a different distance metric. or a different way of combining them, or something. Because the method of looking for similar words totally works. But how we are finding the location of the game might not be any good. So now we're looking for Agricola, but instead of using the cosine distance, we're going to use L2, also known as Euclidean. How about L1? Okay, so all of them give the same result. English Braille is the closest vector to the average of all of the words in Agricola. Seems not useful. Now, the term frequency inverse document frequency, um, in its original formulation worked on words themselves because you'd have a fairly large corpus that you were working with and so you'd have a lot of instances of um, pretty much everything and so you'd have to accept that you didn't know how any of the words were related but now we don't have to deal with that we can be like... What are the 10 closest words to king? As opposed to, oops, the ten most comp, uh, ten most related to queen. Or scientist. Now keep in mind this search is being done in Euclidean space. Well, not strictly Euclidean since it's got the cosine distance, it's um, on the surface of a sphere.
And so it's rather interesting that when you do a search for the things most similar to scientists, you get some scientists back out. I'm just gonna assume that they're scientists, given the nature of this thing, but maybe that's not good. Let's actually look them up. An Italian physician. Physician, physicist, biologist, and philosopher. Why is the scroll broken? Okay. And so, like, in general, the, the nearest word function does work. So, the moral of the story is that we are not embedding them properly. If we were to try the term for we can see in verse document frequency, that would assume that the words are unrelated, but words are related. So we should try to at least do that sort of correction, taking into account the embeddings. And so... So, if you're talking about concept net number batch, I did not make this. This was made by somebody else. They did all of the embedding. I'm just taking their data set and making something that R can actually use. And so they've got all of the code for how to deal with it, like how they built it, how they figured out all the stuff that goes with it, and then the data files that come in with concept and then embedding vector. I wrote a little bit of code that goes through and loads all of this, and then can take any given sentence, split it apart, look it up, and create a matrix of the values. And so the data that I'm interested in is from Tidy Tuesday, which is mostly for data visualization. And they got it from Kaggle, which is for doing contests on predicting things. And they got it from Board Game Geek. And I'm interested in board games, and I would be able to recognize a decent result when it comes back out the other end. And so I know generally what we should expect from Pandemic or Gloomhaven or any of those things. So we'll have some sense of did we do a decent job? Right now, we can say, without a doubt, this method is dumb. Uh, so just taking the average of the vectors just does not work. Uh, let's see. Because one way that we could take into account the embeddings is to um, essentially build a Gaussian mixture model where you've got a bunch of normal distributions centered in certain places saying these are where words are generated from. It's kind of like having a topic space where you would be centered on the word and then anything within a certain range is likely generated from that. Um, if you wanted the actual Gaussian mixture model, you'd probably have to estimate covariances, but you could probably get away with just doing a good old fashioned K-means clustering, supposing you had some sense of how many topics you were working with.
the question becomes does R have a built-in way of doing k-means or do we have to write our own? And then how would we translate from the k-means into the tf out ef thing where we subvert things that happen way too often? Because essentially we would take clusters that happen too often like do the TFIDF on the clusters instead of on words. And so to do that, we would likely end up having to go through all the descriptions, extracting the words. You sort of follow. Yeah, if you ever have questions, feel free to ask. I'm thinking through things that I'm not sure how many of them we're going to be able to implement tonight anyway. Because um, even doing k-means on this data set would be heavy. Because there's probably about two to three hundred words non-unique. Uh, how many unique words were in this? Yeah, so about 200 word, 200 unique words in this. There were almost 300 non-unique. And then there's 20,000 games. So that would be a heavy thing for this to, heavy thing for R to try to do. Python would probably do a quicker job of it. Probably. Well, maybe not. I think it's mostly a question of whether or not the data... Well, because if it's a mutable object, We'd be able to initialize it at the beginning, kind of. Because I'm just trying to think of something that we could run that would be done before we wanted to stop streaming. Because if we, if we made it a matrix, and then identified its cluster, in one of the columns, being able to get the average given the cluster ID might not take that long. It's just a matter of we would have about, what, 4 million? We've got about 20,000 times 200 words. 4 times 10 to the 6th, yeah, it's about 4 million. So... Four million rows, 300 columns. So that's 1.2 billion. a lot. But let's do a quick test. Let's apply CN and B uh, margin two mean. Um, unlist mean. So this is just going to give me the average vector of all of the words that I know. Okay, so that took about two seconds. On a matrix that's only half a million. 
So eight seconds per iteration. K-means should only take about 10 iterations, so it should only take a couple of minutes. It's not too bad. The big problem will then just be... how to actually make it. Because if we try to build it gradually, it'll take much longer than if we initialize it and then fill it in. So I think it'll be faster to actually do all of this parsing twice than it would be to parse it and build our data as it goes. We also need to think through how we're going to actually deal with it afterwards. Once we have... Hey there, line. Um... Once we have the clusterings... Well, I suppose we only need... Oh, so here, here begs a really big question. Whether or not we care about how often a word appears for the clustering, or whether we just want to cluster similar words together. And then figure out the frequency of each of the clusters after we've done the clustering. That would save us a whole lot of time because the number of unique words is probably much, much smaller. Yeah, I think that would be the way to go, is do the clustering on unique words that'll be a much, much smaller set and then figure out the frequency of each cluster afterwards and then do uh, yeah do frequencies after um i am familiar with php it's not what we're doing right now but if it's something that <laughs> easily fits in the chat i can try to help what we're doing natural language processing in R, so I'm not certain how you ended up here with your problem. And if it's homework, do your homework. Okay, so we're probably gonna just do a quick run through of this, grab the unique words, and then maybe try to cluster them. So, I've never really done anything random in PHP, but if that does what I think it does, you're gonna roll a 100, 101-sided die, and if it's exactly 50, they have rolled the magic number, otherwise, they have failed. But rolling a 50 on a 101-sided die is quite difficult.
Oh, um, yeah, so rule number one of coding in a language with semicolons. Whenever it tells you you have an error, look at the previous line. Because it doesn't know it has an error until after the error has occurred. And so when it was trying, trying to parse that code, it wasn't until it got to the if that it realized there was a problem. But the problem was not with the if. growing lists, but here we are. Yeah, and it's almost always a mundane little detail like that. Most often, people who are programming and run into a problem with their program, it's usually not some complex, oh, I didn't understand what I was trying to do sort of thing. No, you forgot a semicolon. You misspelled something, forgot a parenthesis. Very happy I could help. That was a very easy problem. Except when you're the one that makes it and you stare at it and you're like, my if is perfect. Because your if was perfect. I mean, so long as you actually want it to only trigger when they roll exactly a 50. One out of every... 101 times. Well, I suppose PHP might not keep the upper bound, so it might just be from 0 to 99. It's hard to know, given the language, whether or not they include the upper bound or not. Okay, so length of unique words. So we only have 70,000. That's way better than 4 million. Have a good line. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, yeah, so 7,000 is way better than 4 million. Okay, so now we embed those. This might take a while. While that's running, we can see whether or not R has built in K means.
Oh, that's bright. So, any of you who are not familiar with K-Means, what you do is you take a handful of random points and toss them into your data. And then, whichever points of your data are closest to those random things you um, tossed in, belong to that leader that you gave them. And then you recalculate where the leader is to be in the center of the data that belongs to it. And then you reassign the leaders, because since you moved the leaders, they might be closer to some other point than they were previously. So you move the leader and then reassign the leader or reassign the data to the leaders and then keep repeating that until it stops changing. And so then you get charts like this where you're like, OK, where do I cut off the number of clusters? Not seeing yet how this helps. So right now, if we wanted to eliminate the words that are causing problems because they're in everything, for example, the and and, we would have to manually go in and identify each and every one of them. There are certain words that aren't as obviously useless. For example, in this data set, anything that talks about board games is not gonna help you differentiate between board games. And so we wanna get rid of those as well. And what this is gonna do is identify similar words to one another, such that we can identify all of the words that are essentially the same as board game, like tabletop game. By identifying the groups of the words out of these 70,000, we'll then be able to identify which things are common or not without having to go through all 70,000 and identify which ones are common. But the difficulty in identifying the number of clusters is because if you want to reduce the error, all you have to do is make each thing its own cluster. And that doesn't help one bit. And so you need to dial it back to something that reduces the, the data loss from clustering, but still gains you something from having fewer clusters to work with. OK, so it looks like Facto Extra here. Um, is for plotting. Um, so the stats package has just straight up k-means in it. And so we should be able to do that. And then we might be able to make this lovely plot and see roughly how many word groups we've got. And that should be good. Oops, I pushed the wrong thing. And we're back. Okay, but that also depends on whether or not this embedding ever finishes. So if any of y'all have any more questions, I'd be happy to field them now. Because we know that there's built-in k-means that should be able to get the job done. But whether or not we're willing to wait is a whole other thing. Um, so, the difference between k-means and a Ga Gaussian mixture model. In k-means, all of your Gaussians have the same variance in every direction. So, given king, the distance it's willing to go in all 300 directions is the same. But in the actual distribution of words, you might have more that are along a certain dimension than others, and so you might tighten certain boundaries and expand others. 
And so the concept of royalty might not be spherical in those 300 dimensions. So right now, calculating a one-time cleanup, they'll make it work better. More or less, yes. So right this second, what it's trying to do is take each of the unique words that it has seen in the data set and just put them into a matrix. Once we have that matrix, the idea is to fit the k-means to it such that we have groupings of words, and then we could take the frequency of those words within a game to say, yes, it's like that, but their frequency among games to say, no, that's not useful. And yes, it would be a nice cleanup thing such that we could get a good embedding vector for a game from its description. By taking words that are not useful because they're in all of the descriptions and playing down their weight, taking uncommon concepts and bumping those up, And then we'll get one good embedding vector for each game, which I would like to then map to a word such that we have a word that encapsulates that game. I don't know if it'll work. It's the lovely thing about data and programming. You're never really certain if it's gonna work, but it seems like an idea worth trying to know whether or not it works. Like the first thing we tried was a good idea to try. So yes, 300 dimensional vector that is clear, uh, close to words that are related to that game. It can't be all of the words because we are not changing any of the other words position in space. And so it is a bit difficult. And I think that might be why it ends up giving us such bad results is because games aren't encapsulated by a single word. And so that'll be a future project is um, that yes, you would likely need more than one vector for the game. And that's why you end up with each game itself being a mixture of vectors. One for the games, one for common words. Um, well, the thing is, we are not going to change the space in which they are embedded. And so what I'm trying to do is make a map of that 300 dimensional space and identify how useful the various areas in it are to differentiating games. And it'd be great if we could identify the games with one vector and embed them in that space too, just as one location, but that might not be feasible. It might be that every game needs to have two or three or four vectors that it's in the space in multiple places. It takes a little wormhole trip across various parts of the space. And when trying to identify the similarity between games, you'd then have to be like, okay, do we look at the shortest distance between the, the sets of points? Do we look at the longest distance between the set of points? The average distance? That's why I'm hoping with one vector it works because then it'll be very easy. But it seems unlikely that that's gonna work. It might be that you need a handful to identify a game sufficiently well. And this could also do that, where we have groupings of words and we embed them in that grouping space, where you've got, say, 300 groups of words, and any given game is a certain proportion of each.
And now you've got a vector, but it's not in the original space, it's in a derived space. That's fairly similar to um, uh, LDA, it's... Leighton Dirichlet allocation. Because there are two LDAs, and my brain always goes to the one that I don't need at the moment. Because there's linear discriminant analysis, and then Leighton Dirichlet allocation. They don't even share any of the same words. With Leighton Dirichlet allocation, the way it, it's thought about is that you've got topics that you don't know that generate the words that you see. And each document has a certain mix of those topics. And so you're trying to figure out the mapping from your documents to these unknown topics to the known words. And I just like saying Dirichlet. And so that would be fairly similar to this in that we have the words embedded in the space, then how you generate words from that space would be the clusters that we're trying to look at. And then each game is a certain distribution of those clusters. It's got a certain chance to pull from the disease cluster, from the tabletop game, from the dice, from the whatever groupings we find. It has a certain chance to pull from each of them. And so to calculate its cluster in that weird space, we'd have to take each of the words in the description, look at how far it is from <clears throat> any of the groupings. If we were doing a Gaussian mixture model, we would look at that Gaussian type distance. And then each word would contribute to all of the groups or all of the clusters. But its contribution would drop off precipitously as it got farther away. If we we're doing it k-mean style, it would just be what percentage of words in the description belong to this grouping. It's much easier to calculate, but it draws much starker lines. But once you're at that point, you're no longer comparing the games to words. You could then compare games to other games. And we could see in this concept type space, how far is Gloomhaven from Pandemic? It'd be a lot easier if we actually knew what the groupings were, such that we could talk about Pandemic being a certain percentage this, a certain percentage that. Um. I personally like Gaussian mixtures better, but I understand why they're not used. Because if you're going to have them be round, a lot of the outcome is the same as k-means. And if they're not round, then you've got too many parameters. If you have enough data to estimate all those parameters, you're probably going to overfit it anyway. And so the moral of this story in general is that language is complicated. Language is weird. Language is expensive.
And I also don't know how much longer I want to let this run before just saying, ah, this didn't really work. Let's try it again some other time. I don't mind talking into empty space or just one person, but I'm not sure that's how y'all want to spend your evening, just staring at this unchanging screen. I could talk about the trouble that I had making it work. Uh, the code that I used for loading in the data um, the built-in R functions that load standard separated files, whether by commas, tabs, or spaces, uh, couldn't load the data properly. I still don't know exactly why. I don't know what it was in the data that made it just completely freak out. But it freaked out in such a way that it didn't... It didn't throw an error. It just loaded it wrong but not in a off by one, oh, there was an extra space sort of way. No, it was just wrong. And then when I tried to write it from that, it created a file that was interestingly wrong. And so I ended up having to write my own thing to load the data in, and it was just fine. And then I wrote it back out, perfectly fine. Shouldn't end up that way, but once you get into gig-sized files, I could see things going a little weird. And then there was something that I did. Oh, that's right. When trying to load the file in, it was building the list incrementally. And so the further you got into it, the slower it got. And so I ended up having to make a thing that did run through it quickly once to see how many things it was going to have. And then allocate the memory explicitly and then fill in that object. Between that and I forget what the other change was. It went from something that ran for two hours to something that ran for two minutes. 60 times speed up. It's pretty remarkable. Okay, I did not expect it to take quite this long because it it had fit the other things rather quickly. But now that we're doing 70,000, that any amount of not particularly quickly. Oh, I know why. This is not the way I was supposed to fit it. I don't want to hit stop, but I need to hit stop. I wasn't supposed to use fit for this. All I want is a lookup. Because what fit is doing is treating this like a sentence. And so every time it saw a word that's like, well, I could have extensions beyond this, it would keep looking for that. And it's in a loop. And yeah, one giant sentence. And so that's no good. Okay, so... Actually, can I...
do this. Oh, I can. That's an unexpected thing. So I should be able to do just that. Okay, let's see how much time we wasted waiting for that stupid method to be stupid. Now granted, this will probably still take some time. But this is what I meant to do, was you drop in all the words, you grab the embeddings, drop that into a new matrix. That other one I'm not sure would have ever actually finished. Uh, yes, I did play up some onion back on, <laughs> back a while. It's been quite a while now, yeah. And probably the only person in the world who bothers to pronounce it Opus Magnum. Most people are just going to pronounce it Opus Magnum like one would do in English. But I just see that GN and I gotta go with the Nya. It, and even then, Latin is so sketchy on pronunciation, given it's a dead language and all. You pronounce it like you like. Uh, G-N Manium, not like King, like um, Rain. Trying to think of other words that made it into English with the GN as Nya. Oh, it's done! Goodness. Uh, okay. So if we were to... Run k-means on make embedding. Um, uh, and then k-means needs a k. Wait, I have to give you the centers? No, that's gotta be the number of centers. Okay, yeah, so you give it the number or our desired centers. Okay, so I'm going to say 300 because there are 70,000 words. Square root is 264. Let's say 265. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that's why I wouldn't recommend... Um, I wouldn't recommend jumping into weirdly abstract things like this. Um, until you've coded a lot and had a bunch of simple problems. Um, because there's not a whole lot of debugging that goes on, but I do have this environment over here that tells me what's in any given variable, but it's not gonna show me where it's going unless I ask it to tell me. And I'm a 
um, print here debugger. That there are a bunch of tools that make debugging a whole lot easier, simpler, and more user friendly. But none of those existed when I was learning to code. And so this is how I learned how to debug is by inserting things that tell me what's going on in various places and simplifying it until it's only doing some basic things. Stuff like that. But I have ultimate control here, so I can just poke it. Uh, this is R. It is a statistical programming language that is designed primarily um, primarily for running tests and doing data things. And so typically these Friday things would be for visualizing data. And I would theoretically want to be able to visualize this stuff too, but that's still quite a ways off. Yes, R. The IDE is R Studio. It is 100% free. A lot of the stuff is developed open source. And so you can actually peek into a lot of the functions. Um, oh, I forget what what the command is for, for peeking into it. Um, I mean, it's not too bad. And then if you have a particular problem in R, just starting your Google with R usually takes you to what actually tells you how it works. And so nowadays, it's not much of a problem. Um, the reason I noticed that it was taking, like, it was a problem was I just kept looking at it and thinking about what it might have been doing and what it might have been doing wrong, because it shouldn't have taken that long. Even with 70,000, my brain was like, it shouldn't take that long. Even in R. R has certain quirks that make it run slow. And for example, one of them is um, loops. You'd think that wouldn't be a thing that would cause a program language to struggle, but compared to other languages, its loops are rather inefficient. And if you can avoid them, you should. And so anytime you see apply, that's me avoiding a loop. Okay, so next up, we've got our unique words. What we're gonna do is we're gonna try to k-means those into 265 concepts. Let's go. Oh, no! Not a number or infinite in foreign function call. Argument one. Eh? Well, first we check what sort of thing is this. Kind of feels like a data frame instead of a matrix. Can we do, yeah, type of. Unique embedding. It's a list? Ew. a list. Why is it a list?
Oh, it's bark now. I barked it. Should have saved it into something else. But why? Why doesn't it? Well, while that's running, let's look up that error. Because we are definitely not the first person to have that error. There's no way my data frame has missing values. Oh, there is a chance. Oh, there is a chance. There's a chance there are words in that that are not in my... That's not in my embedding. complete cases. Or na omit. Yeah, drop na is what I was expecting from pandas, but that's fine. Um, Okay, so we've dropped from 70,000 down to 45. So there's about 25,000 quote unquote words that were not in our dictionary. Let's once again decrease the number of clusters. Let's kick it down to 200. There we go. Um, actually, no. Let's let's keep keep the 300 that we had from from number batch. Not sure for how far we're going to be able to get with this, but I do like poking at it. And I do like hanging out with folks. Did not converge in ten iterations. Well, then you can have more. Let's try it with 50. And that is the nice thing about certain functions, that they will let you control how long they're willing to go before exploding. Unfortunately, I don't always write my functions that way. And so sometimes you're a little stuck. Oh, 
It's already done. So what do we do with it afterwards? Okay, so it has the clustering, it's got the centers. Okay, so if we then go with words.cam centers, we've got the embeddings of all of their centers. And then if we went what's the nearest word to the center of this cluster? Women's clothing, huh? Not what I was expecting. Foretell. Orion. Inhabitation. Race bike. North Rhine Westphalia. Is that just like because of how many German games there are? Like German and Belgian board games? Because there's a lot of good German board games. And yes, we expect these to be very spread out. That we want these 300 to cover all of the different ideas that are available. Protervity. Yeah, so we would expect these to be quite spread out. Insolent sauciness. What board games are leading to insolent sauciness? Now I'm just curious. Enormous. Something between huge and enormous. Enormous. I could do that. So if I went NB nearest word of protervity, and let's say we wanted the top 10 words that are similar to it.
Petulance, procacity, waywardness, willfulness, petulance, insolence, peevishness, ill nature, and impertinence. Enormous, huge, huge antic, gigundus, enormous, gigantic, gigantify, humongous, huge, and hugen. Okay, so that's neat. Um, so we have those centers now, so we would be able to go through each game, pull out its unique word list. and then map it into this 300 dimensional space by which words these words are closest to. We still haven't necessarily identified useful versus useless, but it's a thing we can do. And then we could find which games are closest to one another in this 300 dimensional space, in the protervity hunormous space. Trying to think if that would actually work. Like, we could literally do it, but I'm trying to decide whether or not it would be a good idea. We've been mapping a lot of words because I think it would be better to go through. Wait, actually, we already have the mappings. So we don't need to run, like, rerun through calculating distances. We've already got the mappings of every word in every description to these clusters. We would just need to. remap that into a vector. Yeah. Okay, so... Let's clean everything up a little bit. We're no longer doing this, but we are getting the word lists for each game. For now, let's just do game number one. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take words.km and then in it is cluster. Oh, but that's from 1 to K. So we would need to know the position of each word in this list. Yeah, now playing... Nothing can be fixed here. God Burn by Martial Art.
Okay, so we're gonna need a map from here to numbers. Actually, let's check whether or not this has names. Oh, it does. Uh, so let's check dog. Cluster 222. Cat, also cluster 222. Car, cluster 175. Okay, we don't need to remap it to numbers. R is awesome sometimes. So we should be able to do this. Not dot omit. And that should get us a list of the clusters. Okay, then we would want a vector So essentially we would want a table of this And then we need to fill in the blanks with zeros. Um, if you see on the screen the messages from Pretzel Rocks, it's a stream safe audio service. And I just selected the playlist Surprise Me. And it has not disappointed. So what do you picture people programming to? Like that's a, that's a question that I would love to ask everybody that programs, is what do you listen to while programming? Because I like this random stuff, I like my normal music, I like listening to streams of people playing games. Um, I could see people that want to code to death metal because it keeps them going. People who code to EDM. Like, there, there's a lot of things I could see people really getting into. Oh, quiet, huh? Are you still in my Discord? Well, I, I didn't kick you out. Oh, you'd have a hard time if there were vocals? I don't have that problem. I do have one, yes. Um, okay, so vec is rep zero 300 times. How do I... Vec equals vec plus table, maybe? Include missing in table. A 
This is not the type of table I mean. No. No. And that's just really what I mean. Yeah, I, like I get why people have trouble listening to things with words while typing. Um, I don't know if I ever did, but if I did, I managed to completely destroy that problem. Hmm, how do we fill this in? Probably just run through. Is it names? Or is it row names? Okay, so it is names. Okay, so grab the word table. Type all hearing words, but you also have to block out any enjoyment of the music if you just, oh no! Mm. <laughs> yeah, having a good soundtrack in a game can be great or cause a serious trouble, which was really nice um, when I was listening to some people playing Death's Door. There's one section with the pistons that are in time with the soundtrack, such that you know when they're going up and down by the kicks in the music. That's no good. Um, as dot numeric. There we go. Oh yeah, yeah. After playing a bunch of rhythm games, if the game isn't in time with the game, woof. Yeah. Have you played? Um, Bullets per minute. I haven't gotten to play it yet myself, but it looks quite fun. And very red. I probably want to tone down the redness a bit, but it's pretty good. Okay, so that's that. We have our vec, and then normalize it. Vec is vec divided by square root of sum of vec squared. And there's our lovely 300-dimensional vector that represents our game description. Oh, and I saw Spooty playing... Uh, not in the Groove. I think that's what it's called recently. And I, I don't know... I don't know how you read the games. Like, I know the fundamentals of arrows point in direction you kick, but they're just the things that happen in that that I I don't know how you're supposed to be able to sight read it. But he does. Like, he's played so many of those games that he can just do it for the most part. But it's... I, 
I don't know how you even approach that stuff. Okay, so that generates a vector for a gain. Okay, so how do we... Not the one I need. I'm not... I'm not talking the arrows are just coming up to the arrows. That's not what I'm worried about. It's those mods that make them twist around and then they're suddenly on TV screens in the distance and then one's coming from the bottom and the sides and then they start rotating such that kicking to the right is coming from the bottom. Yeah, like, I'm not talking just DDR. I'm talking DDR on madness. Like, I don't know how you start that. <laughs> okay, so we need a matrix of wrap, um, and row of details times 300 comma and call equals 300 don't need the by row okay so game vec is now ready to go we're gonna do each game Game dot back sub G is the vector. Yeah, so I at least like I understand the DDR um, site reading. I've never I haven't done a lot of it, but I understand how you would be able to do it because I had no trouble with Rock Band. It's just some of the twists and turns that they do in the mods. I I just don't see how you how you learn to read that. Okay, so we're going to go through every game. We're going to print a thing saying, hey, we're doing it. We break it apart. We unique the list. We grab the words. Uh, we unique the words. We don't necessarily care about how many times any given word was said. It's just the types of words that are used. We set up our game space vectors, and then we vectorize it into our game vec matrix. So now we run this. Error! Error! Substrict out of bounds. Excuse moi. Dim of game back. Why only one row? Are you trying to tell me? I did not think so. Oh, right. What am I repping? I'm repping zero. That's better. if I should pick up one of those musicy rhythm type games like I I miss playing rock band but I don't think I could really play it on stream and I don't have 
technical skill yet to make a procedurally generated rock band game. It is on my list of things that I would like to do, but I'm definitely not there quite yet. Okay, so game vac is done. Okay, so now, in R, if we want to find the top however many similar games to a particular game, what we would do is find the distance from the game to all of them, sort that, grab two through whatever. Um, so, game vec, nearest. So we're going to assume that we are handed a vector, not a game name. I don't know if we should, we should probably do cosine distance. probably grab that cosine dist function. So what we're going to do is going to apply to game vec along margin one. So that's by rows, cosine dist, comma, vec equals game. So it'll run over each row of our newly made game vectors, apply the cosine distance with the game that we gave it. So GV dist will be that. Ooh, let me check something. Okay, so this is just a matrix. It doesn't have the row names. This should then return the distance with the game name. Let's just have it do that for now. Good night. Give me the function. I just, I just want the first one. didn't actually sort it. Pocket 
Mars. Um, why does it... Right, because there is no zero. It's always one. Oh, right. Yeah. Nearest one to pandemic is another pandemic. Why wouldn't it be? But that's, that's a good sign, though. is that other pandemic games are similar in their embedding vector. <laughs> Waggle dance! So yeah, we should probably check out Waggle Dance and see why... And see why Waggle Dance is so similar to Pandemic. Okay, so what it's saying is that the cure and then... I'm pretty sure it goes left, right, left, right, left, right? Um, and so Miramis and then another Pandemic and then Waggle Dance. So we go to Board Game Geek. And do a quick search for Waggle Dance. Oh, we don't know if it's 2014 or 2021. Control worker bees to build a beehive, collect nectar, and make honey, while also being efficient and strategic to outmaneuver your opponents. One to four player Euro style worker placement dice game has a stunning artwork and broad appeal. There are many paths to a sweet victory. It's every beehive for themselves. Compared to Pandemic, several virulent diseases have broken out simultaneously all over the world. Players are disease fighting specialists whose mission is to treat hotspots while researching cures for each of four plagues before they get out of hand. Board game depicts several major population centers on Earth, and each turn player can use up to four actions to travel between cities. So I'm not entirely certain why that one was similar to this. Like it's, you've got workers, you've got goals, but I don't know. I don't know why that one was the closest. Okay, next up, let's check Gloomhaven. Interesting. Okay, now let's try using a different distance metric. And once again, pretty much the same. Uh, there was the other Waggle Dance, but I'm fairly certain it's the same game. They just re-released it. Oh! I mean, this one's got a uh, longer description. Yeah, because this one talks more about how you play it. So it might be that the uh, how to play section lined up a little bit. Hmm. Anybody know uh, a board game that they want to see?
Um, so from here, what we'd end up doing is figuring out the weights for each of these um, each of these columns to see which ones are actually useful in differentiating the games. Fireball Island. Albuquerque. Googly eyes, if it counts as a board game. Googly eyes, or googly eyes showdown. Party game in which players have to draw while draw while wearing glasses that distort what they see. Game is played in teams. So, Pictionary with distorted vision. Cool. Compared to Baron Voodoo. So this will be a nice test of does this work? Welcome to Baron Voodoo, a dice game in which you don't roll the dice. You're Loa, a voodoo god who became the new god of death in place of Baron Samdi. Take his place, you have to catch the most souls in one night before the other, before another Loa. Catch soul, main mechanism seems easy. Move one of your dice. Yeah, this doesn't seem to be the same at all. None of the mechanics are the same. None of the theme is the same. And so I have a feeling that it's something irrelevant that caught its attention. And so if we were to continue this forward, we would work on figuring out what it was that was irrelevant that caught its attention. Oh, so Google Eyes Showdown might be closer. Was that spelled? I wonder if it's not in the data set. The data set might be too old. Well, no, if it's got Baron Voodoo, then it should have a Googly Eyes Showdown. Oh well. Although, Pictomania. And then Ten Dwarves again. Ten Dwarves also showed up for... Um, this also showed up for Gloomhaven. So it makes me think that, like, Ten Dwarves has an awful lot of a certain... Um, a certain useless column. But then again, you'd think if everything had that useless column in abundance, it would all cancel out in the, the difference measurements. Eh, I don't know. So we made a thing and it kind of works. 
but it's not at a level that I would want to put into any sort of production. Even after we do some of the additional things that I'm thinking, I still don't think it would really be production worthy. Um, because for this sort of thing, working from the description is often problematic and you'd be better served by um, knowing whether or not someone has rated something and what they rated it at. I mean, that like showed that you don't really need the rating itself. You just need if they rated it. Um, but from there, you'd be able to see the similarity in games from the similarity of their players. And so people who play similar games are similar people, and thus, if you've got... You could draw a link from games to similar games through the people who play them. And that sort of collaborative filtering would likely work a lot better in drawing the lines between games than this will. But, I don't know. It, with a few tweaks here and there, we might be able to have this focus on useful things in the descriptions to, to draw some useful lines. But it is definitely not there yet. And it's almost 10. I've had a pretty exhausting day from all the snow. So if y'all have any additional questions, any suggestions, any fun stories for the next five and a half minutes, feel free to drop them in the chat. Otherwise, I might call it a night. It's all right, Mac. We don't need stories, we don't need questions, we don't need them. I just figured if anyone had anything burning in their souls, then we could uh, get that finished and then be on our way. This was not necessarily a soul burning type of stream. I mean, unless you were super into word embeddings and whatnot, have strong opinions about Leighton Dirichlet allocation. And with the end of that song and lack of questions in the chat, I will say thank you all for being here, and I will see you in the next live stream of Data or Minecraft or Skull or um, Yoku's Island Express or who knows what with light. <laughs>